computer-aided architecture design. Good day. Qualified in the Osnabrück lab. So, Mehul Butt, University of Bremen. Thank you. Uh, this is the aquatic center that was opened as a part of the London Olympics. Some of you might know about it. It was in the news for some good and bad reasons. Uh, the bad reason was that about 2,500 seats had to be refunded on the day of the Olympics because visibility from the upper decks of the center was either zero or limited. Now, I don't want to be very judgmental about this design or the architect, but the reality is that if you go around looking, you will find lots of problems with almost any building that you would look. Look at this podium. If I was on a wheelchair, even a fancy wheelchair, isn't it my right to come on this podium on my own without any assistance? You cannot do it here. Imagine a conference with 50 people on a wheelchair. That would be a disaster. We do not think about disability access. Now, why do these problems happen? What is it about technology that makes it even possible that these problems would happen? I work in the field of artificial intelligence, and it has a deep connection to the field of design. Herbert Simon, Nobel laureate in economics and one of the founding fathers of AI, he said, design is a decision-making process under the constraints of physics, logic, and cognition. And my contention here, ladies and gentlemen, is that CAT technology has taken physics extremely seriously, but at the expense of logic and cognition. If you look at any contemporary CAD tool, the kinds of primitives that it provides access to are things like points, line segments, and polygons, things that are very geometric, disconnected to any particular, any way, in a, the conceptual way in which a designer would like to think about design. The other problem is they force the designer to think about the design as a frozen moment of perfection. You saw this hall when it was empty. It looked very beautiful, didn't it? Just like this table. Uh, in reality, there's action, interaction, dynamics, communication between people, and all these have a huge impact on how people perceive the design, how they experience the design. So as a designer, you might have the best of intentions and training. You might want to think about emergency situations, blind people, people on a wheelchair, pregnant women, old people, so on and so forth. But what do you do when the technology limits your capability? We have taken artificial intelligence-based methods and developed what I call cognitive cat technology that allows the architect and an com intelligent computer program to collaboratively design, collaboratively design an environment. Here's a little demo of a prototype that we have built where you will see the cognitive experience of a person as a person walks in the building. Going through the room, the visitor can see some windows all around, some doorways all around, and some pieces of furniture all around. The visitor follows the room's linear flow. The room seems crowded and continuous. So this is not hand-coded text. This is generated in real time by a computer program in anticipation of how, it will have, how a person will experience the environment. It is not just a prototype. We are in the process of making major uh, design implications in the new Parkland Hospital in Dallas, which is one of the largest hospitals in the United States right now. And in, in, we are on the way to commercialization as well. Thank you very much.